In this video, we will be answering the question on the screen from the 2022 Ordinary Level Maths Exam, Paper 1. If you are looking for any other questions from this paper, there will be a link in the description to a playlist that will have them all. And this is question five. Uh, question five is a mix of different types of questions that are actually very hard to study for. You won't see them every year. Well, actually part A is maybe the exception. You'll see something like this every couple of years at least. Um, but a lot of them are quite hard to, um, to study for and therefore they're quite hard for me to explain. I'll do my best in this video. Starting with uh, part A. They, they tell us that they want the answer to look like this. A being a number, so a number multiplied by 10 to the power of something. So they want the answer to look like something multiplied by 10 to the power of something and this one as well will look like the same. Okay, and that's something, that first letter here, A, uh, needs, to, needs to be between one and 10. In this case, this is a very common question, so you sort of need to just learn how to do this. I'm gonna put in dot uh, zero at the end, because really it's all about moving a decimal point to, um, until it becomes a number that's less than 10. So if we move it once, it's 120, move it again, it's 12, move it again, it's 1.2. And that's what we want here, 1.2. And how many times we move the decimal besides this number here? So we move it once, twice, three times. 10 to the power of three. Just to explain what this is saying, this is saying 1.2 multiplied by 10 three times. So 1.2 by 10 is 12, by another 10 is 120 by another 10 is 1,200. The reason we do this, um, it, it's silly in these two questions to do, but honestly, in science, we often do questions about um, how much mass is on in, in the earth, how much mass is in uh, the sun, uh, the speed of light, things. Like, numbers get really big. So to save us writing out really long numbers, this is a great way. Okay, so this one, we need to move the decimal point until we have a number between 1 and 10, uh, this number is too small. So if we move it once uh, this way, we will get 2.7, uh, 2.7, and we move the decimal place once, but we moved it to the right, so it's minus 1. So really what this is saying, it's 2.7 divided by 10 once, and that's 2.7 divided by 10. If you don't understand this, uh, don't worry too much. Just do a good few examples out of the book. Uh, there's a good chance you'll be asked it in the exam. And if you go on to college, uh, a lot of college subjects will end up using this. You'll use it, you'll figure it out as you use it more and more. For the exam, just practice a few, you should be able to get it. Okay, on to part B. Again, like I said, another question that's quite hard to explain. Um, very easy if you know how to do it, but very hard if you don't. And the question is, uh, what is it about a falcon? A falcon that can fly 120 miles per hour. And they want us to, uh, to find how long it would take to go 100 meters, in how many seconds. They also tell us that a mile is about 1.6 kilometers. There's a few ways to do this question. And a question like this is quite common, but it will look very different every year. So I'm gonna try and show uh, a way to think about the question um, that will hopefully work in most years in most different types. I'm gonna write this as uh, 120 miles, and then on this side, I'm gonna write one hour. Because that's what this question sort of is, it's 120 miles in one hour. But the answer, well, yeah, in one way to look at it, the answer we want is seconds, and we also want meters. So we don't want miles and we don't want hours, we want seconds and we want meters. So let's just slowly change that. You could, you could change this in many different ways. So from this point on, my answer will look different than other people's. I'm gonna change maybe the hour first. Instead of an hour, we'll say 60 minutes, which is the same thing. Um, that's 120 miles in 60 minutes. Let's change it to seconds. That's uh, multiplied by 60, we would get 3,600 seconds. So again, it would go 120 miles 
in 3600 seconds. Um, next, instead of miles, I would like in kilometers. So 120 multiplied by 1.6 is uh, 192. And this is kilometers now, 3600 seconds. Um, they, we don't want kilometers, we want meters. 192 multiplied by 1000 uh, meters in seconds. You've already got lots of marks at this point, by the way. Lots of marks, especially because you, you now have meters and seconds. They wanted, their, their question is about meters and seconds. Um, they want to know how, how many seconds it takes to go 100 meters. So how I would do it, you could just change this into one and then um, find out how long it would take. I'm going to change this number to 100. So I'm going to divide both sides by 192, you know, I'll change it to 1 first. 192,000, uh, this number becomes 1, 1 meter. This number uh, becomes, uh, let me get this right, it is a 0, I don't have the answer here, so I'm doing a little bit of maths in my head, I hope I do this right. <laughs> I'm not doing that bit of maths, it's something, something else. <laughs> so one meter would, the falcon would go one meter in 0 0.0187 seconds. We don't want one meter, we want 100 meters. So we multiply both sides by 100, that's easy. Move that, 1.875. This is the number I'd written down, so the maths I was doing in my head was that to that. Nothing too difficult. And that's the answer, except for one last thing, you will lose one mark in this question if you don't do the last thing. They ask you correct to one decimal place. 1.875 is not the answer they want. The answer they want is 1.9. And that's uh, part B of question five. Okay, for part C, hopefully you can see uh, the graph given on the paper because my drawing is not the best but hopefully you'll be able to explain it. So they ask for the two values of x for which mx is equal to zero. m of x is equal to zero. So m of x, uh, here's m of x, the bottom curve, and it says y is equal to m of x. I find that useful because this is the y-axis and this is the x-axis. So when y equals zero, when mx equals zero, y equals zero, well here's zero, and this is when the bottom curve hits this line. So this point and this point, and that point is x is equal to one, and this point is about, well it looks like x is equal to 4.5. So that's it, that's the full answer to C part one. Um, very easy when you know how to do it, um, but if you don't know how to do it, it's very hard to get 10 marks. So these are, these are tricky questions in that way. Hopefully I explained it there. Y is equal to mx. They ask mx equals zero. Well, go to the y-axis and find zero and go along it. If they asked for mx is equal to two, you'd go to the y-axis of two and go along it and you'd get a couple of points and so on. And they will, they will ask that sort of question in certain years and might say um, fx is equal to seven. You'll have to go to an axis of seven and go across. All right, part two, I'll do it down here because I need the same graph. Uh, they, they say, find the values of x uh, for which kx is less than mx. kx is the top one, mx is the bottom one. So this should be quite simple, hopefully. And uh, when is kx less than mx? Well, let's go along it here. kx is above mx. It's above it. It's above it. It's bigger than it. It's bigger than it. It's the same as it, it's now less than it, it's less, it's less, it's less, it's less, it's the same, it's uh, bigger, it's bigger, it's bigger, it's bigger. So when is, um, I think I may have mixed myself up there, hopefully I didn't say anything wrong, um, for which kx, yeah, kx is less than mx. So it's less than between these two points. It's less than when x is bigger than two bigger than two, 
but less than, um, what do I have here, 3.5, 3.5. So when x is between do these two points, don't worry if you're bad at writing this sort of thing, perfectly okay to say in English when x is big, um, yeah, bigger than, I wish I didn't have to write this out, bigger than two and less than 3.5. Right, use as much English as you want in the exam. I love maths because I don't have to use English much. My writing's bad, my spelling's bad. Um, but lots of students are, do not know how to write answers like this. X is bigger than 3.5 um, and let's see, I've wrote that wrong in fact. Let me fix that. It should say when x is bigger than 2 and less than 3.5. Apologies for that. But this is why we should probably write it in English. Okay, I hope that was in some was some help to you. Thanks for watching and have a great day.